Hello Geometry. This lesson is entitled Trapezoids and Kites. <clears throat> well first let's start here with a refresher. What is a trapezoid? A trapezoid is quadrilateral with only, keyword only, one pair of parallel sides. So here's a little picture for you, a little diagram. The two sides that are not parallel, we call those legs. So those are the legs of the trapezoid the two sides that are not parallel. All right. Well, if you think about it, since the two sides uh, are parallel, the top and bottom here, both legs play the role of transversals. There are two transversals. Therefore, the same side interior angles are supplementary. So again, what that means is this angle right here and this angle right here will add up to 180. Okay? They're supplementary, 180 degrees. In like manner, these two angles right here are also supplementary. Those add up to 180 because they're on the same side of the transversal and interior inside the parallel sides. Okay? So that's a big thing to know. So using that, we have to find the missing angle measures in the following trapezoid. Now we're given two angles. We're given 48 degrees and a right angle. So if we want to find this top right one, Okay, let's call that A. We'll call that angle A. If we want to find angle A, the measurement of angle A, notice again it's it's on this side of the uh, transversal here. Okay, so on the right side we know that these two angles add up to 180 degrees. So we could say the measurement of angle A plus the 48 degrees has to add up to 180. Therefore, if we subtract 48 from both sides, we end up with the measurement of angle A is equal to 132 degrees. Okay? So we know that's 132 now. Now, how about this other angle on the bottom left? Let's call this angle B. Well, up here in the upper left, we notice that we have a right angle there. Therefore, um, that's 90 degrees, which that means this has to be 90 as well, because you have to add up to 180. So we know that the measurement of angle B is 90 as well. Okay? So again, the two angles that are on the same side as the transversal inside the trapezoid are going to be supplementary. Now, what if the two non-parallel sides are congruent? Again, what if the two legs are congruent? Then we call that an isosceles trapezoid. So we have an isosceles trapezoid if the two legs are congruent. And again, what that would look like is if you have a trapezoid here in which those sides are parallel, these two legs will be congruent. Okay? Well, here, ABCD tells us is an isosceles trapezoid and the measurement angle B is equal to 102. That's all we're given. So we need to find all four other sides. Well, not just are the legs congruent, but that means these two base angles will be congruent to each other. These two ones at the top will be congruent to each other. So we know that this 102 is going to be congruent to angle C. So that also is going to be 102 degrees. And like we did before, we know that angle A and angle B are going to be supplementary. So the measurement of angle A plus the 102 is equal to 180 because they're supplementary. So therefore, if we subtract from both sides, we get 78 degrees. So here we have 78. Let me rewrite that. We have 78 degrees, which means this also is 78 degrees. And again, this only works if it's an isosceles trapezoid. But if it is, it makes these problems much easier. The two top ones here will be congruent, the 102 and the 102, and the two bottom ones will be congruent as well. All right, let's move on. Here we have a, this extremely similar problem. Uh, now we need to find the three angles that are missing, angle P, angle Q, and angle R. Again, for angle P, we just subtract it from 180. So 180 minus 70 leaves us with 110 degrees. And since it's an isosceles trapezoid, we know this one up here will be also 110. 
and this bottom one is going to be 70 degrees because angle R and angle S are congruent to each other. Okay, so that's how we handle isosceles trapezoids with those interior angles. Here, the diagonals of an isosceles trapezoid are congruent. Now we're going to do a nice little two column proof to prove that. Again, the diagonals of an isosceles trapezoid are congruent. So here goes our diagram. We have this trapezoid, isosceles trapezoid, ABCD. Now, <coughs> excuse me, since an isosceles trapezoid, we know that the two legs are going to be congruent. So it tells us AB and DC are congruent. So <coughs> let's start this one. Okay. Oop, sorry about that. We always want to start off with a given, so let's go ahead and add that in. Isosceles trapezoid ABCD with AB is congruent to CD, which is given. Now the question is, um, how do we build off of that? Now the biggest thing to know is we're looking, we're trying to prove that AC, I'll do this one in orange, AC here is congruent to DB. I'll do that one in blue. Now think about it. What we're going to have to do is prove that we have some similar sides and similar angles, but we need two triangles. That's the problem. So if you look at um, if you look at BD, it's a part of this triangle down here, and in like manner, the orange one AC is a part of this triangle down here. Now, what I always tell you to look for first is do they have a shared side? Okay. Well. In this case, they do. They both share BC. So we have here BC is congruent to BC. And again, that's a reflexive property. Okay. So now we have two pairs of sides that are congruent. Now again, to prove triangles congruent, we need those three bits of information. Well, since this is an isosceles trapezoid, we know that these two base angles here are going to be congruent to each other. So we can say that the measurement of angle ABC is going to be congruent to the measure of angle DCB. Now again, we have to give our reason. It has to make sense here. Well, again, like we said, since it's an isosceles trapezoid, their base angles are going to be congruent. And there we have it. Base angles of an isosceles trapezoid are congruent. So notice here now we have three bits of information. That's what we need to prove that those two triangles there are congruent. So now that we can, oh, sorry, now that, now we could say that those two triangles are congruent. Therefore, triangle ABC is going to be congruent to triangle DCB. And that is because of the side angle side, because again, here we have AB a side, we have angle ABC, which is our angle here, and then side BC side, angle, side, and that's the same thing for the blue triangle. Okay. Now since we know that the two triangles are congruent, then all their corresponding parts are congruent, and that's what we're trying to prove. Again, we're trying to prove that AC and DB are congruent. Well, both those triangles are congruent, so therefore we can say that AC is congruent to DB because of CPCTC. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So there we have it. We've proven now that the diagonals of an isosceles trapezoid are congruent. So now let's take a look at a kite. And again, here's a little refresher. A kite is a quadrilateral with no parallel sides, but two pairs of congruent sides. And you'll notice here that the two shorter ones are congruent to each other, A, B, and B, C, and the two longer ones are congruent, A, D, and C, D. Okay, well, what do we know about a kite? The diagonals, since we just pr proved that the diagonals of an isosceles trapezoid are congruent, Let's talk about the diagonals of a kite. Well, they are perpendicular, which means they form right angles at their intersection. We're going to go ahead and do one more proof here to prove that to be true. We like to be able to prove the things that we say so we know that we are only speaking truth. So let's prove this one. We have kite RSTW with TS is congruent to TW and RS is congruent to RW. So basically just gives us the information about the kite. Um, this slightly is redundant because we know it's a kite. 
but it just wants to let us know that the two, again, longer sides of the kite are congruent, the two shorter sides of the kite are congruent. So always start with your given. So let's go ahead and write that as our given. There it is. Kite RSTW. <coughs> the TS is congruent to TW, and RS is congruent to RW. And that was given. Now again, we always want to think about what we're trying to prove. We're trying to prove that TR and SW are perpendicular. So that means they need to have a right angle there. Now this is a, a bit of a longer two column proof, um, but we are, we are going to bear through it and be able to prove this thing. Um, well, if we, can, if we need to prove that those are right angles, again, what we have to do is come up with a plan here. Well, we would have to first prove that, let's say, this is one way of doing it, that these two triangles here are congruent to each other. If we can prove those two triangles are congruent to each other as a whole, then these angles would be congruent to each other. And since they're supplementary and congruent, they would be perpendicular. So that's, that's going to be our strategy here. But we can't really start there because we don't have enough information to go to those two triangles. But what we do know is that this triangle right here, we have two sides of that triangle. And we also have two sides of this triangle. So we can first prove that those two triangles are congruent. And again, what I always say is always look for shared sides on a two column proof. Well, they both share this side right here. So they both share TR. So I'm going to go ahead, instead of typing this out and taking the time to do that, I'm going to say TR is, you know what, no. Typing is going to look better and more legible. So here we go. TR is congruent to TR. Now, how do we know that? Again, when they share a side, that's called the reflexive property. Okay, so now we have three pairs of sides for both triangles. So now we can say the triangles as a whole are congruent to each other. So we know RST and RWT. RST, triangle RST is congruent to triangle RWT because of side, side, side. Again, if you look here, we all have all three pairs of sides. So again, like I said, the beginning of this problem is if we can get down to these two triangles, then we can know that um, the angles that are connected to both of those, the course, corresponding angles are going to be congruent. Well, if you look at those yellow triangles in uh, comparison to the orange and the blue, they both share these top ones right here. Okay, It's a part of all, 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 sorry, both pairs of those triangles. So if we could say that those two angles are congruent, that's going to help us. So we have angle STR and WTR. We know that those two are congruent to each other. So let's go ahead and write that in. There we have it. Angle STR and WTR are congruent because we know that corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. I need to take a side note really quick and just uh, explain a mistake that I made. Um, Notation-wise, in the last one, if you notice, there is a mistake here in this example right here. Notation-wise, those M's should not be there if we're talking about congruence, because that means the measurements are, and measurements are equal, um, then the angles themselves are congruent. So I do apologize for that. So it should just say angle ABC is congruent to angle DCB. Just a little side note, I just realized my mistake as we were working on this example here. Well, back to this. Um, if we clear, let's just clear out these colors here and just talk about those two top triangles um, that we're trying to get to. Now, if we're talking about these two right here, okay, oh, that was a huge mistake. There we go. The blue and the orange. Now what we've just proven, again, these still stay true that those are congruent, and we've proven that these two angles are congruent. Now again, these two share a side, so we can say that those two sides are congruent, which if you look at it, will help us say that the triangles as a whole are congruent to each other. So they share the side TZ, so we can go ahead and say that TZ is congruent to TZ because of the reflexive property. Okay. Reflexive property, they share a side. Now again, if you look at this, we have all, we have three pairs of information for those two triangles. And again, that's what we are 
looking for to prove that those two top triangles are congruent. So we can say those now that those two triangles are congruent. congruent. STZ and WTZ. A few more steps on this one. So here we go. So triangle STZ is congruent to triangle WTZ, WTZ because of side angle side. Well, now that the triangles, those two top triangles are congruent as a whole, we can say that their corresponding angles are going to be congruent. So here we have these two angles right here, which we're trying to prove that are congruent. Well, we can use the CPCTC to do that. So and that's angle SZT and WZT. SZT is congruent to WZT. Now the fact that they are co uh, that they are congruent, but they're also supplementary, means that they'll be right angles. But again, that's what we have to write. We have to say that they're supplementary. So we know that um, since they create a line, they have to be supplementary. So angle SZT and angle WZT are supplementary angles because they are a linear pair. They create a line. And last thing to say, I know again, this is a long two-column proof. Um, but doable. So here, again, we're trying to prove that they're perpendicular. Well, if two angles are congruent and supplementary, that just proves that they have to be right angles. Okay? Angle SCT and WTZT are right angles because co a congruent linear pair are right angles. Okay? Actually, our last step is that, um, again, we're trying to prove TR is perpendicular to SW. So we can say TR, that's an R, oh, here we go. TR is perpendicular to ZW because that's the definition of perpendicular sides. So again, if they form right angles, then they're perpendicular. Whew. That was a long two-column proof, and that makes for a wonderful extra credit problem, by the way. Look at that. Uh, but now we get to use that um, to apply that. We get to apply that to some problems now. Uh, it's kind of nice that we go through these proofs so that we don't have to continuously go through the proof every time we have a new problem. But now we know that they are perpendicular. So we get to apply that here. Um, we have three angles. We have the measurement of angle one we're looking for, the measurement of angle two, and the measurement of angle three. Now, just on what we did that long proof on, was to show, again, that this is a right angle. So we know one, every time on a kite, that's going to be 90 degrees where those two diagonals intersect. Well, if that's 90, let's go ahead and look at angle two here. If that's 90, and that top one's 32, and we have a small triangle here, we add those up and we subtract them from 180. Okay? So to find angle two, again, we take 180, we're going to subtract 90 plus 32, which is 122, which gives us 58 degrees. Okay, 58 degrees. And angle 3 is actually really basic, too, because um, a diagonal in a kite, the, the one that's longer, is actually going to bisect. Okay. Now, we haven't necessarily proven that, so I'll show you how to do that without the proof is that this is 90 also on this side, okay? And if these two are congruent, then that means these two angles would be congruent to each other, okay? So therefore, we know, again, that's being bisected up at um, the vertex B. So if this one's 32 right here, that means angle 3 is also going to be 32 degrees, okay? I just felt like I just had a long explanation for something very short. <laughs> Okay, same thing here. Find the measurement of angle 1, angle 2, and angle 3. So the measurement of angle 1, the measurement of angle 2, and the measurement of angle 3. So again, always just look for that 90 degrees first. That's going to save you some time. So we know that um, that right angle on the inside, again, where the diagonals intersect will be a right angle. Well, if that's 90, that means this is 90. All of them are 90 on the inside. If this one's 46 right here, that means angle 2 is going to be 46 as well. So we take our 180. We have 46, angle 2, 
And now we know that that one's 90, which adds up to 136. So we just do 180 minus 136. So angle 3 has to be 44 degrees. Okay? So that's how we apply uh, these problems with the kite. And I believe that was our last example. So I know it's a longer video and definitely a longer two-column proof that we did. But um, I hope it helps to be able to apply um, those theorems to these problems. Good luck.